The hypersonic combined test force at Edwards is gearing up for the first flight of the X-51A Wave Rider flight test vehicle in the spring of 2010. What we are going to do is we're going to take the uh, X-51 Raid Wave Rider. Uh, we're going to launch that from a B-52 uh, at 50,000 feet over the Pacific Ocean. And then the uh, uh, vehicle is going to drop away. It's going to be accelerated by a solid rocket booster up to about Mach 4.5, at which time the uh, solid rocket booster will drop away and the vehicle and the engine which is being tested is going to ignite and then further accelerate that vehicle up to Mach 6. The engine being tested on the 51A is a hypersonic scramjet propulsion system. A scramjet is a engine that has no internal moving parts that it takes the air in, you mix fuel in it and it automatically burns because of the high speed, high temperature that you get in flight. It it now is able to produce a thrust. Teams of testers have put in years of work leading up to the first flight of the X-51A. It's a fairly complicated test. The uh, altitude is right at the very top of B-52 uh, capabilities. Um, we also have chase, so they have to be there as well. Um, the telemetry has to be relayed from uh, Naval Station Point Magoo. Uh, we have to have a control room with about 35 people all watching the various telemetry. Um, so there's a lot of teamwork aspects to this whole project. Testers say the purpose behind this program is to demonstrate the ability to use air-breathing hydrocarbon propulsion in the hypersonic flight regime, which is flight more than five times the speed of sound. Well, what makes that uh, a challenge for us and why we need to do the research is, is that uh, uh, conventional uh, turbine engines are basically limited to about Mach 2.5 or 2.5 times the speed of sound. And it's really tough from the pressure and the heat and the aerodynamic loads on the conventional engines to get anywhere past about Mach 2.5. The, the scramjet on this X-51 will be able to take in, in air at flight speeds of over Mach 4 and up to Mach 6 and take air from the atmosphere, burn it, and then use it for thrust. And if we get that capability, we'll be able to apply this technology to many other uh, flight applications that the Air Force might use. As scramjet technology is developed, testers believe that in the near future it could be used to aid warfighters as a weapons delivery system. Further down the road, it is believed it will make space access easier. Don Waldman, Edwards Air Force Base, California.